In lesson six, we're going to talk about, um, we're actually going to go back and look at this flash lesson that we only partially finished when we talked about debits and credits. And what we're going to look at is this stuff, the expanded ledger. We're going to go all the way to the end of topic three, the simple income statement. So the expanded ledger, what it actually means is the expanded chart of accounts, because we're going to add a whole cup, a few new categories of account types. So an, a category would be something like assets. Right, so we're going to add a whole bunch of new types of equity accounts. And the reason, quite simply, is that so far, if you recall, we have been charging anything that changes equity to the equity account. So the, the one and only equity account we have, capital. Well, guess what? That allows you to tell the difference between your starting capital and your ending capital. And that's virtually useless. How are you going to tell what your revenue was in all your different sort of revenue categories? So like if you have a certain type of product and you have a certain service, like how do you tell the revenue difference between the two? Or how do you control costs? How do you monitor salaries versus rent? Well, you can't unless you record that info and you can't record that info unless you have a place to record that info in. So you need different types of accounts that affect equity. And so what's going to happen is you're going to, if we're just going to focus on equity here for a second, what you're going to do is create new accounts, but what you have to realize, keep in mind that this this rule, these rules you've been taught don't change. Equity is on the right side of the accounting equation. So it has normally, in total, a credit balance is increased with credits and decreased with debits. So remember, we, we mentioned there were about six things that changed equity. Revenue, uh, expenses, capital gains, capital losses, a new injection or investment of funds or any other asset, and the drawings by the owner. So those six things can actually be broken down into um, things that make equity go up. So credits, right? They would be new investments or revenues and capital gains, or things that make equity go down, which would be capital losses and expenses, and then owner drawings. And your opening balance in the actual credit account would just be, is just now gonna be what you start the period with. Um, usually in my class, I also, add new investments to this starting capital account. I don't create a new category just for this because it doesn't really happen that often. So once we have the capital account, unless you're making a new investment, we don't touch this anymore until the absolute last step of the accounting cycle. These sort of four types of things, these sort of five really accounts, you got your beginning capital account, you got any a whole bunch of revenue accounts, you'll have a bunch of expense, a losses accounts, and you'll have a drawings account uh, for each owner if it's a partnership, for example. And you can use those to calculate certain things. The key being to remember that the capital account is no longer the business's current equity value. That's an old equity value because all the changes during the period now will have been channeled out into these new categories of accounts. And there'll be multiple revenues usually and multiple, definitely multiple expenses. Right. And then you're going to have and they're going to be used to calculate certain types of things. So revenues minus Expenses and losses are going to equal your net income or net loss, right? Your profit or loss. And then any new investments plus a profit or loss minus your drawings is going to equal your change in equity during the period. And if you want to know what your equity is now, you have to take all of the equity accounts and add them together. A lot of students get a large, a huge chunk of the way through grade 11 accounting and forget or don't realize that revenue accounts are actually equity accounts and so are expenses and drawings, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you want the current total equity right now, you actually have to add up the balances in all of these accounts. So for those who like math, the formula is current total equity is the capital account plus any new investments if they're not already plopped in the capital account, plus all your revenues, minus all of your expenses, minus all your drawings. So let's do an illustration then. We've got our same example again. So your cash auto, uh, these transactions, they should look familiar, right? I started a business by investing $10,000. So before we start though, just understand that we used to, we did it the first time with this equity really, which is a category, it's not even an account. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change it, right? It needs to be this one. And then we need somewhere to, to put this stuff. So we're breaking equity apart. So this will now become the capital account which will only have initial capital in it. And then we need the other stuff, but remember they're equity accounts. So if you recall, things that make equity go up are credits. So your revenues are gonna be credits and revenue is a category as well. So we don't call it revenue, we call it something else. So for a service business, like an accounting firm or a law firm, uh, fees earned is a pretty common title. 
And then expenses, you, there are specific. So if you've got a certain type of expense that isn't already captured by an existing account, you have to make a new one because you want to be able to categorize expenses, important ones, into their own identifiable account so that you can track them, right? And report on them. So we got rent expense and then we have drawings. So let's go through the transactions again. I got a little bit too ahead of myself. So the owner invests $10,000 in the business. This is a standard one. It's not an equity impact. Well, actually it is. You just, you, you put 10,000 cash in, so you debit cash and you would credit your capital account for the initial starting of the business. Next, owner purchases office equipment for $3,000 cash. So office equipment is debited, it's an asset, it goes up and you credit cash because you're paying cash for the office equipment, cash goes down. Third, owner performs services for a client for $5,000 cash. Okay, so, so normally that would make us wealthier. So we would credit the equity account or the capital account. But now we're channeling that out into a revenue account. So instead of crediting capital itself, we do credit an equity account, but we credit revenue. So revenue is always a credit. Remember, our debits are first. So we debit our cash to make it go up and we credit our revenue fees earned. Then four, we purchase a car for $4,000. No problem. We debit the car at $4,000. We credit, uh, it was paid for with a loan. So we're going to credit that bank loan $4,000 because we now owe more money. And then the last one is we pay rent for the month $500 cash. So that's an expense and expenses lower equity and things that lower equity are debits. So, and those really are the two to remember. Those are the ones you do most often. Revenues are credits because revenue makes equity go up and expenses are debits because debits make equity go down. So debit, rent expense, $500, credit cash, $500 um, for paying that rent and you're done. And then we're gonna add one. Let's say the owner draws out $500 for personal use. So drawings, like expenses, lower equity. So drawings are always debits. Assuming, of course, you're not reversing a drawings because then reversal is still the opposite. It's the same for all accounts, right? So drawings is $500 debit and we credit cash, $500. The owner takes out the money for personal use and you're done. And the next step is still the same. The accounting cycle is still the same. You still journalize, then you post your accounts, come up with the trial balance and then use that to make your statements. So nothing new there. So we go on, we total our accounts. You should know how to do that by now. And then we make a trial balance. So I'm, I'm partially finished. Um, we're on capital, but remember capital now is just gonna be starting capital. So it's gonna be 10 grand. And then we have all the rest of our accounts in this order. Drawings follows your capital account. So it's a debit of 500. Then your revenues come next and they're listed in terms of significance. If you have a chart of accounts, um, it will again, we, you need to refer back to this because we're now at the point where we have all the categories. So most significant to the business are usually listed first and then expenses are listed in alphabetical order. It's that simple. So fees earned, there's only one revenue account. So we credit that 5,000 on the trial balance and then there's only one expense. So that's pretty easy in this case. So $500 goes there. Then you total your columns and it will balance. If you forget these other equity accounts, you won't balance with this capital. That's why at this particular moment, you don't know how to complete a balance sheet because it won't balance because you're missing all of the value in these equity accounts that you've split off from capital now. So again, here's how this calculation works. Your net income is the difference between revenue and expense, but your change in equity from where you started at 10 is what you made minus your expenses, minus the discretionary drawings that you took out. So it would be a change in equity of 4,000, which makes your total equity, the 10 you started with, plus the change, right? 10 plus five minus 500 minus 500. So the total current equity right now would be 14,000 and your liabilities are four and your total assets here are 18. So now, once you include all of these, you can balance the balance sheet, right? Total assets of 18, total liabilities of four, total equity of 14. So they do, left side does equal right side when you include them all. So then from that, you would go on and make a, uh, an income statement, which I'll show you in two secs. Um, just remember, this capital account, don't you're gonna wanna touch it because that's what you've been using all semesters so far, don't unless it's a new investment. Okay, income statement, real quick. There are some things that have changed since I made this flash video, but I, not enough to make a new video. So, because they take forever, 
So I'll just explain that you don't, we don't, we're not going to do it this way anymore. And it's essentially the same, except there's not going to be two columns. This one was for totals, and this was for individual account values. We're just, it's just going to be one column. We're going to do it the same way, which is what was in here is now going to go in here. That's all. So we list revenues by significance, and these indents are no longer relevant uh, using technology, so you don't need to worry about indents either. So you list, you list them, and if you have more than one, you will total them. You don't actually need to do this total. Again, indents, not relevant. But remember the rule, you, you do need to make titles and totals look different than individual accounts. So they do need to be bolded or, or whatever, so they stand out. And the single underline rule still applies. So it means you're adding everything up above this line up to the next line. So then you leave a single space and you put your expenses and you don't need to color them. So expenses, then you list in alphabetical order. In this case, we only have one. Um, it, and you don't always have to write expenses, but in most cases, your exercise will give you the, the titles to use right in the drop down menu, so don't worry about it too much. Then, total expenses again, you don't need to write that if you only have one. And these totals will be, of course, in this column. And then, lastly, you will leave a space, one space, and one space only here, here, and here. Net income or net loss, don't write both, use one. Net income or net loss, depending on what it is, you can double underline this. So officially, there are three numbers on your financial statements that get a double underline. They are, on the balance sheet, total assets, and on the balance sheet again, total um, liabilities and equity, right, the balancing number, and on the right side, and then this one, net income or net loss, gets a double underline, and that's it. So that is essentially an income statement. It's not that tricky.